Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus in Denver, and today we're going to be working on this Chanel purse. We're going to be dyeing it into black. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. Uh, this purse is really nice here, but I don't know, you can probably see some some damage in the coloring there a little bit. And there isn't much that could be done because of how soft the material is here as far as, you know, really restoring it too much. I mean, we can definitely improve it. But the lady that brought this in, she wanted it in black anyways, so I thought we'd make a, go ahead and make that uh, happen instead of having to try to clean it. So it kind of worked out perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and start by, of course, uh, removing any of the hardware that I can because this hardware, we don't want the dye to get on it. I mean, it's going to be a little problematic cleaning it off afterwards, especially because it's got a little bit more of like a rustic-y antiqued finish to it. But um, there are limitations as far as how much of it I can remove from what. Um, you know, I can remove this plate here, no problem. I can remove these sections here. This, however, unfortunately, the only way to remove it is getting in through the liner, taking it all apart and everything. So we're going to go ahead and uh, leave it as is on that. But I'm going to go ahead and start by doing that. Uh, also, the strap as well. We're going to go ahead and dye that. But again, even with the strap, I'm going to need to be a little careful because I cannot remove the chain here. You know, well, I can, but it's better if I leave it be. Well, I'll see what I can possibly do. But for now, we're either way going to be trying to take care of the upper as far as cleaning it off. We've got to clean off the finish on it. So I'll start out by, of course, just removing all the hardware on this. So let's go ahead and get started then. All right, so we got most of the hardware off of here already. Now again, like I said, this piece here, unfortunately, I can't exactly take it off because it's on the inside and I talked to the lady that brought it in. Um, I talked to her about it, we're, that we're gonna be taping this off to protect it from the dye getting onto there. So instead of trying to unstitch any of this and then stitching it all back together because it is extra work and everything, we're gonna go ahead and carefully tape all this off. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and also see if I could remove this chain and I will remove the pins here too. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do all that off camera so I'm not wasting your time too much. Go ahead and tape this off and see if I can remove this and remove the pins. And if I can't remove uh, the chain or anything, I'm gonna have to try to figure something out about being very cautious about that. So we'll see you back in just a little bit then. All right, so I've got all the hardware taken off as best I can on there. Uh, took off the little pins that were in here. The One of them was fairly stubborn. They put a lot of uh, thread lock on there, but at least they put thread lock. Some companies don't do that. And then, as you can tell, I taped off that pin right there, the large pin that works with that snap there. So it's going to be protected nicely. Now at this point I'm going to need to strip down the finish as much as I can off of here. Well, not as much as I can, but quite a bit. And we're going to be using this stuff here. Um, Angelus Leather Prepping and Deglazer. So it's going to help remove a lot of that finish off of here. As well as off the straps. Now unfortunately I did try with the 
chain here, but I'm gonna have to leave it as is and just be careful when I'm dyeing it and cleaning to make sure that I end up, uh, you know, cleaning it as soon as I get some dye on there, I have to wipe it off immediately. Now, today I am at my house. Um, I'm not at the shop, that's why this scenario is a little bit different. And unfortunately, I cannot uh, use this chemical indoors. At our shop, we do have some ventilation systems, but the cleaning process I can't do indoors because the deglazer is very strong smelling. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to do this outside or I'm stripping it down so that it kind of airs out. Plus I need it to kind of, um, you know, dry before I start applying any kind of dyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. I'm gonna see if there's a good area that I can do it for possibly with recording, but um, I may have to do it off of camera at least. So I'll be back in just a little bit then. All right, so scenario kind of changed for me, unfortunately. I wasn't able to get this taken care of at home because unfortunately all the dyes and cleaning solutions, they're a little strong and we can't allow the smell to you know travel around the house for us. So we're gonna go ahead and do this portion here at the shop where we have better ventilation and everything and um, you know do some of the dye work and we may finish out the rest of it back at home afterwards but for now at least I'm gonna go ahead and start stripping everything down again with the Angelus uh, leather prepper and deglazer and we're just basically trying to remove the finish on there and maybe some of the original dye as well and that's kind of the goal it's a bit of a process so I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through most of this anyways all right so let's go ahead and get started may be a little painful for some to watch to strip down a nice color. Some people like this lighter color, some people would rather go black on this, but bear with us, it's gonna look beautiful. I think it's gonna look worse before it looks nice. So I'll go ahead and just fast forward the rest of this for you then. All right, so we got everything cleaned off and removed a lot of that finish. So the dye is still kind of there, but of course they use a fairly potent dye when it comes to lighter colors like this. So it's not exactly easy. It's actually bleaching, in other words, what they do because, of course, leather doesn't come out this light color. So, you know, with our cleaning process right now that we just did, we removed a very thin coat of finish that they had on there, and that's what we had to use 
uh, had to remove before we can apply any form of dye. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and let this dry just for a little while longer. It's mostly dry anyways, but we'll make sure that it's completely dried out uh, before we end up getting ready to dye it. So once we're ready to dye, we'll see you back in just a little bit then. All right, so we've given this quite some time to dry nicely. Now at this point we'll go ahead and start getting ready to dye. Now I'm going to start out with uh, using just a regular old dauber like this. I've got my black dye right there, and then I've got my airbrush system attached right here to the table at the moment. But we're going to start out with the dauber, of course, and kind of give us that uh, initial base, basically. Now if we were relying strictly on the daubers, it may not turn out so nice and even, but we'll go ahead and get started. You ready for the splat? Splat. <laughs> there you go. Makes no difference on which end you start on, basically. But I'm just gonna apply a, a nice even coat everywhere. It's not quite as even as, say, with when we're gonna be using the airbrush system, but this will kind of give us our base. And during the cleaning process, I did notice that this leather here, the way it's treated and everything, it definitely, definitely takes on um, any stains or cleaners or dyes very, very easily. So, I mean, if you have one of these bags here in this lighter color, you you definitely have to make sure you waterproof it. You know, it's a, it's a must. If you don't waterproof it, um, that bag's not gonna not gonna hold up long, kind of like this one did. It ended up with some staining, but it wasn't anything major from the look of it. I've seen bags in much worse shape, but still, it's uh, it's definitely going to show a lot more over time. I'll go ahead and fast forward the rest of this. Basically, it's just dyeing everything, so nothing too fancy. So I'll go ahead and keep going then. Alright, so we've got our base coat on there already, so at this point we're going to go ahead and just let it dry for a good while. 
Um, I'll probably put on a second coat just like this. Afterwards, we're gonna come back probably later today and start using the airbrush on there just a little bit to even out all the dye. Uh, sometimes it can take a couple of good coats. I'll go ahead and do the second coat, uh, potentially the third coat off camera. Um, because we're trying to really get that true black to it and it still has a few lighter featured colors to it So I'll go ahead and get all that taken care of and we'll see you back here in a little bit when it's time to do the airbrushing That does look a little more fun as well. So we'll see you a bit later then All right, so we've got uh, a good couple of coats on here. We've got three of them on there already of dye Allowed it to set and dry for a while at this point and now I'm just going to be adding too much dye, at least for this leather. Some leathers we really have to apply a good amount, and some leathers, you know, just just one or two coats are plenty good. But this one seemed to have been perfect at three because it's starting to show a lot more of that chroming that's left over from the dye. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, Saphir Juvicure. It's got some waxes in there and a good amount of pigment to basically start working on removing that chroming as well as you know conditioning leather a little bit and bring some more even pigment now i was planning on using the airbrush on this but after working it a little bit probably better not to anyways It'd be just a little bit too much at that point so now we're just going to work on it this way Looking pretty all right. You can see the difference there quite a bit between the spot that was dyed there and the part that we're working on. So I'll go ahead and just fast forward this because it's going to take a while and we'll just keep going. So let's get going. All right, so we're getting closer. It's looking pretty nice so far. Now I gotta just do the straps. I'll go ahead and do the straps off camera so I'm not wasting your time too much longer on that. But 
Yeah, it's looking nice. So at this point, I'll we'll go ahead and let it dry. You saw me using the brush here. I was actually using that to kind of get some of the access off. I wasn't using it for actually buffing. But uh, this stuff dries fairly quick, so I'll set it aside, still let it dry while I go ahead and do the straps. Um, I'll go to one of our machines and just buff it up nicely. And then afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, some Big Four to... Technically, it's as a conditioning agent, but what I, I'm really after is, you know, is to kind of use it almost like a light cleaner. It's going to help remove any excess black cream or polish or uh, cream the stuff here as well as any excess black dye so i'm going to end up using that to kind of clean it all off just in case you know so it doesn't end up transferring from the bag onto clothes or anything there shouldn't be any kind of problems with it at this point but i still want to make sure you know this bag goes out the door properly you know finished off with nothing coming off of it or anything like that so we'll go ahead and get that taken care of and uh, we'll see you back in just a little bit then all right so i got everything buffed up i did the straps i just kind of set them aside though for now so um or was i oh there's my towel so now i'm just using the big four to just kind of help me clean it up i don't want to use any of the sphere products for this because um they're a little bit more potent i guess you can say for cleaning aspect of it if so um, if they're turpentine based the renovator is water based but you know we already use this for a good conditioning and wax based but this will help us with the cleaning aspect of it and you know it seems like it's done beautifully I mean nothing's coming off so we had some great success with this one sometimes some bags you know they just they have a reaction whether it's the original dye or just the leather that they used on it and this Chanel bag I mean they really used some nice stuff on it I, I love this leather that they used on it. it was beautiful very well very well designed now the color unfortunately again like I had mentioned that is the downside of a lighter color you're gonna have some issues with that so you know, we just had to kind of suck it up like if you have a bag like this and it's in a lighter color from Chanel definitely definitely have to be prepared for that even even if you ended up using waterproofers on it or something else you're you're definitely going to have to uh, have to be prepared for some damage either from liquids or sun damage as well so if it's a purse that you end up uh, taking out with you during the day frequently the sunlight will eventually damage it now as far as this stuff goes here I mean that we've we've used everything on here it's going to last for quite a while but every now and then regardless even if we dyed it or its original factory dye it's going to start eventually kind of wearing out fading and it's something you're going to have to touch up you know it's it's inevitable regardless of what process was done to treat the leather to dye it and everything it's going to happen i'm just going to use my brush here oops to brush off some of that access again is doing very well I mean that graying there you know that's uh, that's with some good pressure and scrubbing and that's the same spot over and over I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a new spot now and let's see um, I still got to go through the sides here All right. now go ahead and uh, fast forward the rest of this it's not gonna be too long basically and uh, we'll just keep going right
so we're basically all done with the dyeing. I just gotta buff this up real quick and uh, to just kind of make it look nicer. Um, in some cases we do put a clear coat on, but considering how well this leather had taken everything on, um, I'm not gonna put any kind of clear coat on it. This worked out perfectly on it. Some leathers, we actually have to use different uh, different techniques, different methods as well, and different steps too. This is just one of the steps, and this is on a higher grade leather that Chanel uses that really takes on the dyes, polishes and creams very beautifully. Um, so now at this point, like I said, I'm just gonna buff this up. I'm gonna take off the tape off of there, uh, put get all the hardware, clean it all up on there, make sure that it's all clean. So all the metal that we took off, the chains on the strap, I mean, they, they still had, they, they still had a little, a little bit of black every now and then in some spots there. And I really try to clean it off right away, but, um, you know, luckily, luckily it's been cleaning off fairly well. I tested out a few spots on there. So I'll just go through, clean it all up reattach everything and we're all done so let me go ahead and get all that taken care of you know I, i'll do i'll do all that off camera there's there's really no point in you know having to show you how i put the hardware back on it's the same process as the way i took it off just the opposite way so all right so let's uh let's go ahead and finish this up i hope you've um, enjoyed the video um you know so far so good and uh we'll see you back here in just a little bit then all right so we've got the um, bag all taken care of all the hardware is attached nicely cleaned it up everywhere as you can see there looks very nice in the black too but uh, that's the whole process basically to re-dye a chanel bag like this it's it's a bit of work i mean considering that it is just a small bag so just um you know, bear in mind again, as I mentioned, that eventually all the colors do fade, regardless of if we end up uh, dyeing it or if it's original from the factory. So it does have to be touched up and reconditioned every now and then. Um, conditioning on any forms of bags, I highly recommend doing it once every six to 12 months, depending on how often you do uh, wear and use it. But as far as color touch up, maybe closer to about once every 12 to 18 months, roughly. Now, as far as, um, you know, other types of leathers out there, it's very different. I mean, this bag luckily was very easy to, to get the leather to take on all the dye and the creams and polishes properly. So it was a very, very nice one to work on. It was kind of uh, enjoyable, I guess you can say. I have another bag that I'm working on. That one's a little less enjoyable, unfortunately, but, you know, takes a little more effort sometimes on certain leathers and this one I very much enjoyed but if you have any questions or comments leave them down below um, you can always give us a call as well if you're local here in the Denver area please stop on by we'd be more than happy to help you out with whatever you may need otherwise if you're not local you could always go to our website cobblersplus.com and send us a message through there or call if you have questions about pricings or options for whatever items you may have that you'd like worked on pictures always help more pictures makes it a lot easier for us to identify in person is best of course for us to see it but if you're not local um, we'll do the best we can for you as far as identifying or giving you options and pricings otherwise if you're not local as well and you're wanting us to work on any of your shoes boots belts jackets any other leather goods basically or purses like this you can always ship them out to us just on, go to our website again at cobblersplus.com under the mail in order tab follow the instructions ship it out and we'll give you a call within the first day or two after receiving it talk over the process of the repair or die job like this and then after it's all done we'll send it back to you and hopefully you enjoy it once you get it back um, hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you get notified when we have new videos out we try to do a lot of product recommendations testings our basic repair process and everything so I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time